are you preparing for the king? I want you to think about that just for a moment. Are you preparing for the king? I'm trying to get everything restarted, rebooted. But anyway, I, I hear you, Lord, loud and clear. I'm just going to follow him. Uh, it's just amazing how you can go and do all preparation, and then you present it to God. And if that's not what he wants, you just throw it out the window. How about that? Amen. But we thank God that he is sovereign. Look at your neighbor and say, are you preparing for the king? Amen. So in, in the book of Esther, I'm trying to get my laptop to work. Uh, this particular story is very familiar uh, to most. Um, and I was truly blessed just going over, just looking over and allowing God to speak to my heart once again concerning this. It's amazing how in the word of God you can never exhaust the word of God. God will always breathe on it. There's always more to hear from what thus says the Lord. So in the book of Esther, I don't know if you've heard the story, but I'm going to talk to you just as if you have never heard the story. Now, uh, in Esther 1, I'm just closing all these wonderful things. Y'all really don't care about all that, do you? You just care about the word, don't you? In Esther 1, it reads, Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, uh, this was the Hasserus who reigned over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. And those days where King Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Susan, the citadel, that in the third year was his reign, and he made a feast for all his officials. I want you to skip down to verse 9. And the word of the Lord reads, Queen Vashti, also made a feast for the women in the royal palace, which belonged to King Ahasuerus. And on the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he, co he commanded, and here go, here go all of these words. I was like, ooh, were they African? Uh, Mahuman, Biztha, Harbana, Bigtha, Abitha, Zethar, Carcass, seven units who served in the presence of the king Ahasuerus to bring Queen Vashti before the king, wearing her royal crown in order to show her beauty to the people and officials, so for she was beautiful to behold. But Queen Vashti refused to come to, to come at the king's command brought by his eunuchs. Therefore the king was furious and his anger burned with him. I want to talk to you about, are you preparing for the king on today? The first thing that we want to talk about is the invitation. I don't have the pointer, so you'll just have to flow with me, if you will. The invitation. The invitation has already gone forth. And so the thing that we need to think about, uh, the word of the Lord says in Isaiah 1 and 18 and 19, this says, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins shall be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. As though they are red as crimson, they shall be as wool. These are the very words that the Lord told me at my beginning stages. He said, come now, let us reason together. So the invitation was made. What's so amazing about that? God is, even though he's so mighty, even though he's so awesome, he said, come now, let us reason together. He want to have a conversation with me. And so when we're talking about uh, having this uh, conversation, the invitation has been extended. And so we need to make sure that there's a distinction between the saved and the unsaved. Why am I talking like this? Because we're living in a world right now where everything is kind of like mixing up a little bit. We don't know what's what. What's right is becoming, it's, it's being called what's wrong. Uh, there's hard to... It's a hard thing to distinguish between uh, what's real and what's not because the spirit of compromise has been released in the body of Christ. But God said, come now, let us reason together. Come here, I want to talk to you. And so the analogy here, in Esther, the king, Ahasuerus, he invited the queen to come, and she refused. 
Now, this is what's going on in the world right now. The invitation has been sent. We all know that, the, that Jesus, he has already died. You know, he's already died. He's done what he's going to do. We know exactly what we need to do to uh, inherit in eternal life with the Father. According to Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says, if you what? If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, amen, that we will what? We'll be able to be saved. But the problem is that in the saving process, we forget that it is a process. So oftentimes what happens those who are on the outside looking in, they'll say, well, I, I don't want to give my life to Christ because I'm not ready yet. Well, baby doll, friend of mine, you'll never be ready. There's nothing that you can do to get ready but to give your life to him fully and say, God, I surrender all. So the invitation has been extended. This is another aspect that uh, I want to share with you. We always hear that, you know, God wants you to be saved, and yes, he does, but don't ever think that God is desperate. Don't ever think that God is desperate because just like Vashti was replaced with Esther, there is somebody who will say yes. Oh, my God, the time is winding up. So we have to be able to say, okay, Lord, I know, I know that I need you, and I know that there are things that I need to get together, but I am willing to go through the process. You got to be willing to go through the process as messed up as I was. I was like, you know what, God, I, I just can't do this. I can't do it. Can you imagine Pastor Day going to the club? I was in the club one time years ago. It wasn't recent. That was a joke. I was in the club one time. Someone came in, and they start, started shooting bullets. I was like, God, I'll never go back to the club. I won't ever go back again. I, I don't know how to dance. That's why I only went to the club about five times. I don't know how to dance. But anyway, I said, God, I, <laughs> I don't. I said, God, if you just get me out of this, I will never go back. And I was back the next week. Somebody say, Lord, deliver. Lord, set her free. Yeah, why am I saying this? Because now we're living like it's okay. God understand. He know that you're still young. Somebody said God is not desperate. He's the same God. There has to be a distinction between what's holy and what's unholy. But we have to first have a willing mind. The word says if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But the other part says if you resist and, and rebel, you'll be devoured by the sword. We won't talk about that part. We're going to talk about the willing and obedient part. Amen? Amen. So when, when God is dealing with your heart, and, and I just believe that there are some people in here right now, you've been struggling with the process because in your mind you're thinking, man, I, I really want to do this thing. I know that time is winding up, but I just don't know how to do it. Well, well that's why you come to be empowered. That's why you get in position and go the right pathway, and then you'll be mentored. But if you don't show up for the tour, then you can't be mentored. Amen? Amen. This is going in good. Just open your mouth and get this casserole. Oh, glory to God. It may not taste good, but guess what? It's good for you. Amen. Amen. So in here in Esther, uh, we talked about how Queen Vashti, how uh, she decided that she was not going to come. And I was thinking about it. I was like, man, well, if you go back and read the story, you'll see that they were partying for 180 days. I was like, maybe she was tired. The last seven days, he, he wanted them to come. They had been drinking and all of that. And uh, he, he summoned for her, and she did not come. And so by her not coming, it was defiable. And guess what? It could have been executionable by death. And I was just thinking about it, just pondering. I was saying, well, what is, which one is worse? to be able to be executed and just die, or to watch your replacement do what you were supposed to be doing. Look at your neighbor and say, don't get replaced. God has not changed his mind. The invitation has been extended. 
Oh, my goodness. I thought about that. I said, I, I don't know. I think I would have rather execute him. I don't, I don't know. I don't think I want to watch that. Amen? Amen. So just looking at here, um, the next one, let's see. Okay. Yeah. There you go. There it is. Okay, good. I just want to make sure I had control of everything. Okay, so let's look at uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 1, since we're already there. Let's look at 2 Timothy 3 and 1. When you get it, say amen. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it is up for those who, who can see that far. The word of the Lord reads, but know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, that men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiven, unforgiving, excuse me, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Let me just stop right there just one, more, one, one moment because what we have been doing uh, in the church, in the body of Christ, we've been having this form but no power. The world is looking at the church and they're looking at the church looking for an answer, but when they come in some churches, they see the world. What? What's going on here? God, God's word has not changed. His word, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So what, what's really going on here? So it's telling us here that uh, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, I, one thing that I always say is that we've got to learn how to make the divine exchange. I've got to exchange my will for God's will. God, what is it that you would have me to do now that I have accepted the invitation? Now that I've accepted the invitation, now we're talking about preparation. So in my preparation stage, while I'm going through the process, know that the Lord is with you. He says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. So during this process, we have to remember that this process, my faith is being renewed. My faith is being built up. And this is going to, uh, while my faith is being built up, this is going to buffet me. This is going to help me get stronger. My faith, you know, my faith is so much different from when I first started because I've seen what God can do now. Amen. Glory to God. So there's, no, there's nothing that I know that he can't do. I know that he's a healer. Why? Because he healed me. It's not something that I read about, but it's something that I've experienced in myself. Somebody say process. So we got to make sure that we're ready to go through this process. Now, getting back to the word in 2 Timothy, it reads, the word of the Lord reads, uh, godliness but denying its power. And here's the part. Here's the part. I'm just going to say it because this is the word. And from such people, turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, lead away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Why is it that in Christendom, we're the only species that we can do something for 27 years and still don't know nothing? Hmm. Only, only as a Christian. What, what is that? I think I just lost all friends. I just suddenly feel alone. What is that? Why is it that we can perfect other areas? We can go to school for our education, and I believe in education. We can go to school, and you know we practice this and practice that, but we don't want to perfect what comes to the house of God, and we want to give him the change in the leftovers. I ain't scared of none of y'all. That's a joke. What, what is that? So we have to position our minds and know that God is real. 
He's so real that he wants me to love his word more than anything else. He's so real that he says that I want you to hate your mother, hate your brother, hate your sister. Whoop. I thought God was a God of love. He's saying, I, I want, why, why, why? Because he wants me to love everybody less and love him more. See, if I love him more, I'll, everything else, it'll fall in place. If I love him more, if I seek out to do his will, now we're talking about the, prepar the preparation part. When I seek out, there it is. Isn't that beautiful? We're in the next phase. As I seek out his will for my life, as I prepare, as I make these steps and I make this determination that, oh, God, I know that you said that you're with me, that he will continue to guide me. But just like Queen Vashti, sometimes we decide and we just refuse. Like, I'm, I'm just not going to do it. Well, either God's going to be God or not. This is what the Lord wants. Just let me say this to you. Uh, this just, I was just quick, and I want to start doing this. Uh, our broadcast, we know that the word that we are teaching is a blessing to many people. And there's a cost involved in getting everything uh, produced, getting all the editing done and things like that, and even time it takes to teach the word of God. I want you to have the word. I want you to be built up. But Galatians tells us that he who was taught in the word should communicate with him who is teaching him. So if this, and I know, I won't say if, this broadcast, this telecast has been a blessing. However you are viewing by way of television, YouTube, our website, via internet, however, Periscope, however it's coming to you, uh, take time and look at that address that's on the screen and send a seed of support to support this ministry. Send a seed of support. It doesn't go to me. It goes to the support and paying for the things that you are seeing and hearing. Uh, Yeshua said the prophet isn't without honor except in his own house. Let's make it not true in our local city. Here in Memphis, Tennessee, you know, many times wherever you teach, people don't support you. Where you, you don't live it, they do support you. Let's, let's, let's honor God and support what we are doing. And we appreciate you so much. God bless you. Real good. James 1 and 27. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. You can change the world around you when the world around you is not changed. You can do that. It being in a world that's spotted, being in the world that's all mixed up, this is us. Just because I'm in the world doesn't mean I need to look like the world, doesn't mean I need to compromise like the world. As a matter of fact, there's thousands and, and, and several, I don't even know the number, only God knows, there are several people who have decided that I am not going to compromise. I'm not going to allow the spirit of compromise to rest on me. God, I'm going to go with you, period. Amen. Amen. So uh, the word is telling us that we need to make sure that we keep ourselves unspotted from the world. So when I do this, I have to make sure that I'm bathing myself in the word of God. It's not going to be enough for me just to hear the word on Sundays and just Wednesdays and Tuesdays, but I've got to go through the process of hearing the word over and over again. Sometimes we don't even know what to study, but whatever your, your pastor is giving you, that's a great place to start. Sometimes we want to hear God in an audible voice. God, I don't, know, I don't know where I need to start in the Bible. So we pick the Bible up and just flip it over. For real? <laughs> well, why don't you start with what you're already being taught? Amen? Amen. Let's keep it moving. So do not be what? Do not be what? Conform, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing, somebody say testing, Pass the test. Pass the test. Make up in your mind that I'm going through the process. It seemed like it was easier when I was in the world. Why? Because you were on the team of the devil. What? Of course. 
But when you give your life to the Lord, at least you have his power that's on the inside of you. Pass the test. When I gave my life to the Lord, it seemed like, can I tell this story? Y'all won't stop the camera. Seemed like all the hell broke loose. Why? We'll deal with that in just a minute. But why is it that sometimes things get so hard when you have committed to a thing and, you, and it makes you want to give up? Why? Why? You never know your strength until you become that weak. Then you'll be able to see the full manifestation of the power of God. He says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. If you could do it, why would you even need them anyway? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay, let me finish reading this scripture and just calm my little self down. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. This, this is good because right now what we're dealing with, those who are, you've been in the body of Christ for a long, you've seen that there has been a falling away, but the, the word already forewarned us of that, that there's going to be a falling away. Just make sure that you're not the one who's falling away. Just make sure that you're the one who's, who's committed that I'm going through the process. Just make sure that you're the one who said, you know what, I'm going to stick and stay. I don't care what they do. I know what God has done for me, and we know what the end says. Amen? Let's go back to, to the book of Esther, if you will. Let's go back. We need to look at a couple of things. Amen. Is this, is this word blessing you on this morning? Hallelujah. We thank God for his word. Amen. Are you preparing for the king? Are you preparing for him? We know that he's coming, but uh, one thing that I noticed that in the book of Esther, before she was even chosen, there was a preparation time of 12 months. But we're making a preparation for a lifetime. We're talking about eternal life here. So why would I uh, put myself in jeopardy and worry about or be entangled with those things that are temporary when I know that this temporary thing is going to pass away anyway? What, what's my focus anyway? Whatever you focus on is going to get larger and larger. So if I'm focusing on kingdom, that's all I'm going to see. But if I'm focusing on my problem, guess what you're going to see? Only the problem. Amen? Amen. So during your preparation time, during your process, don't get discouraged. Know that God is with you. The same God that was able to save you is the same God who's able to keep you. The word says that he is able to keep you from falling. Yeah, that sounds good. He's able to keep you from falling and present you what? Blameless. Glory to God. So many times we try to, you know, we try to do it in ourselves. And my God, I, I, I want to do this thing, but I just don't know how. We'll learn how to trust in him. If we can trust God with these natural things, surely we can trust him with our eternal soul. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Okay, so now we're, we're back in Esther. How can, we, how can we prepare for the king? Well, first of all, we need to make sure we learned earlier for those who were able to meet that uh, we don't need to forsake the assembly as a manner of some. Amen? We need to make sure that we're coming to be equipped and fellowship with the other believers so that we can hear how God is leading his body of Christ. Amen. So are you saying that as a Christian, uh, I can't just stay home? I can't just stay home and not be connected to a ministry? Are you saying, well, God, he put it in place for a reason. He wants everybody to come into under the orderly arrangement that he already has for us.
fellowship and live music. Join us at our Marriage and Singles Supper, February 13th at 6.30 p.m. at 2771 Colony Park. This is a catered event, so please purchase your tickets online at our website at www.empowermentoffaith.org. Dr. Larry Smith and Pastor Renee Smith will be sharing nuggets on how to impact the kingdom and how to make your marriage last. So whether you are single or married, you are in for a real treat. Hope to see you soon at Empowerment of Faith Christian Center. enjoying our broadcast well now you can view our messages whenever and wherever you'd like on youtube just search eofcc and don't forget to subscribe that way you will be the first to know whenever we post a new video for your spiritual empowerment are you tired of enduring life well it's time to enjoy life through the empowerment of your faith say this to you uh, this just I was just quick and I want to start doing this uh, our broadcast we know that the word that we are teaching is a blessing to many people and uh, there's a cost involved in getting everything uh, produced getting all the editing done and things like that and even time to take to teach the word of God I want you to have the word I want you to be built up but Galatians tells us that he who was taught in the word should communicate with him who is teaching him so if this, and I know, I won't say if, this broadcast, this telecast has been a blessing. However you are viewing by way of television, YouTube, our website, via internet, however, Periscope, however it's coming to you, uh, take time and look at that address that's on the screen and send a seed of support to support this ministry. Send a seed of support. It doesn't go to me. It goes to the support and paying for the things that you are seeing and hearing. Uh, Yeshua said the prophet isn't without honor except in his own house. Let's make it not true in our local city. Here in Memphis, Tennessee, you know, many times wherever you teach, people don't support you. Where you, you don't live it, they do support you. Let's, let's, let's honor God and support what we are doing. And we appreciate you so much. God bless you real good. Yeah.